Hi everyone, welcome back to the editor tutorial series. In the previous lesson, we briefly introduced the Parker template and showed you how to create a level 1 map with this template. In our final lesson, let's go through the traps used in level 2 and level 3 map and how to adjust them. Let's take a look at the maps for level 2 and 3. In these two maps, we use some traps that are different from those in level 1. How are we supposed to use these traps? In level 2, we involve trampoline, turntable and snow monster. The trampoline is realized by the speed property of the part. Set an upward speed for the player by adjusting the value of the speed in Y direction. So that when the player jumps on the part, it will display the effect of bouncing. Meanwhile, in order to allow the player to show the effect of bouncing forward, we have to tilt the trampoline and add a speed value in the X or Z direction. Display the effect in game. The turntable trap is composed of two parts linked by a hinge. One is the disc and the other part is the transparent part under the disc. If you want to reuse this turntable trap, you must reuse both of these two parts together. We can adjust the rotation speed of the turntable by changing the angular velocity and force properties of the hinge. The snow monster is realized by the AI attributes of the entity. Therefore, we can adjust the effect of the snow monster by modifying parameters in the AI attributes. For example, adjusting the distance and area of the field of view can change the snow monster's auto attack range. You can also increase the snow monster's ability range to make the snow monster's skills launch from a further distance. In level 3, we added frozen trap mechanism. Similar to electric power, the frozen trap also has a transparent part attached. When the player touches this part, they will begin to freeze and slow down taking damage at the same time. Since the Parker template already have the logic of this part set, don't bother to change it. Do remember to bring this transparent part along when using this trap. In order to make our game more in line with the event theme, we can select a more suitable skybox for the map. Find and select the map file in the game resources. Click the skybox option in the property bar to change the image of skybox. Usually, the images will be placed in the skybox folder. Note, if you want to import a custom skybox image, we've set up a standardized format. Finally, we set up an easter egg hunt as the end of the game. After completing the three levels, the players will enter the final scene with an easter egg. We need to prepare the easter egg entity in advance. Go to the clickable options in the properties of the easter egg. Open the event editor of the easter egg entity. Select, when the entity is clicked, as the starting node. Here we have to implement three functions as follows. 1. Give a hint to all players in game. Player has already found the easter egg, the game will close in 30s. 2. Add a halo buff to the player who has found the easter egg. 3. Take the easter egg out of the map once clicked by the first player who found it. As for the logic of ending the game, apart from closing after the easter egg is found, you can also set the game duration in the game settings. For example, close the game directly after 5 minutes. That's it, thank you all for watching. We hope this video helps. If you want to know more about our editor, comment below or leave a message on our official forum. See you in the next video.